My students are big fans of science fiction movies. They're self-healing. Iron Man, super stretchy. Spider-Man, or reconstructable. Terminator. Now, materials we design can realize a lot of the things in the movie concept. More than 10 years ago, the robots uh, did not have any sensors to allow them to have sense of touch. When I discovered the need in the robotic field, putting sensors uh, onto robots uh, to enable human touch, that inspired me to start developing flexible electronics uh, that uh, could mimic the sense of touch. Why can't we make the materials uh, uh, themselves uh, to be like our skin? Chemistry can really make a difference in terms of making new materials and enable new properties. But to take the materials further, we need to put them into practice, to test them in the environment we intend these materials for. We're working on the next generation of robot hands. Touch is important for anything that moves and lives in the world. This is a good example of the current state of the art for robotic tactile sensing. Underneath this orange skin is an array of little pressure sensors, so it can feel pressure when it's grasping an object. The next generation of robot hands will be a stretchy material like this, but it will also have conductive traces in it, sensors embedded, as well as communications capabilities. So it'll be like an electronic skin. In my group, we are using human skin as the inspiration to think about how we design the electronic materials for the future. Stretchable, flexible, can self-heal, even biodegradable, just like our skin. The molecular design requirements for stretchability and the conductivity are conflict with each other. That becomes exciting uh, scientific problem. Right now, we are trying to understand the molecular design rules for one property at a time. There are a lot of strategies to make materials stretchable. We work closely with polymers. A polymer is a chain of monomers that are connected in series. What makes something stretchable is amorphous, soft content. What makes something electronically conducting in a polymer is rigid and close packing. Understanding the interplay between those two and controlling it through different types of chemistry is how we're able to make stretchable electronics. The material that I've developed is a conductive stretchable hydrogel. Hydrogel is a material that consists of polymers but also has a high content of water and because of that it's able to largely mimic the mechanical properties of soft biological tissue. We start by making hydrogels out of P.PSS, a very commonly used conducting polymer at a very low concentration that serves as a conductive framework where we can then introduce other chemistries and other types of polymer systems that can make the material extremely stretchable, extremely soft, extremely tough, all of which are really needed for interfacing with soft human tissue. The self-healing property came from the incorporation of dynamic bonds, so for example, hydrogen bonding. In many biological systems, hydrogen bonding exists. We incorporate hydrogen bonding sites that can break if we stretch the material, uh, use force. But this breakage is highly controlled, so the material will not form crack and can continue to elongate. But then if we stretch it too much, there are cracks forming. These um, hydrogen bonding, they can reform even at room temperature. Then these polymers will be able to self-repair when the bonds are broken. Most semiconducting polymers consist of a chain of alternating single and double bonds, so the electron can travel through this network. We're interested in introducing a bond that imparts the electronic activity to the semiconductor without breaking the conjugation. So instead of a carbon-carbon double bond, we use a carbon-nitrogen double bond, and this is known as the imine bond. 
when you add acid in addition to water to a polymer with this bond, it will break the imine bond apart. This chemistry is very important to design biodegradable electronic polymers. In terms of uh, applications uh, of uh, electronic skin, uh, we look for places uh, where they can play a unique role. We work with uh, collaborators uh, in medical school to develop a solution where our electronic skin can solve the problems. For the PageFox collaboration, we were able to develop a wireless device and have it degrade naturally. We were looking for some way to consistently monitor the anastomosis after surgery. We really wanted a biodegradable sensor because then we never have to go back in and take it out. To simulate that anastomosis, we dissect out a single artery, and then we take the flexible sensor and wrap it around there and secure it in place with two microsutures. We wanted it to be small, flexible, tunable, and that perfect product that not only is biodegradable, but biodegrades away at a certain rate. All of those demands go into the chemistry of the unique polymer that wraps around the sensor. Ultimately, as we understand the molecular building blocks for property A, B, C, D, some of the design may overlap with each other. Then we can start to uh, have combinations uh, of uh, multiple properties in one material. Chemistry is the enabling science to allow us to design better materials, materials uh, with the desirable functionalities. Without chemistry, we won't be able to manipulate the properties of such materials. I have been inspired by a number of uh, chemists who went beyond just uh, designing beautiful molecules. They really think about uh, molecules which enable new properties or can change the world. Mm -hmm.